Physics major in 2014, part three. Question 17. If the universe was such that the speed of the molecules in a substance increase with temperature, but at any particular temperature, the speed of the molecule in a substance was the same, which process would not occur? So we know that when temperature increases, the average speed or the average kinetic energy of the molecule also increases. When temperature remains constant, then the average kinetic energy or the average speed, they remain same. So they're asking in which process this does not occur. Let's see option A, boiling. Boiling takes place at a constant temperature to change the substance from liquid to gas. So this is not the answer. Condensation is when substance changes at constant temperature from vapor to liquid. So obviously that's not the answer. Evaporation is a process where substance changes from liquid to vapor, but this occurs at any temperature. It can occur at any temperature below the boiling point. This is when the substance, when the molecules of the substance on the surface of the liquid have more energy, it leaves the surface of the liquid, giving a cooling effect and a sudden drop in the kinetic energy of the molecule. So evaporation does not take place at any particular temperature. It takes place at a range of temperature below the boiling point. So C is the option. Let's see what about melting. Melting is when the substance changes the phase from solid to liquid at constant temperature. So D is not the option. The answer for this question is evaporation, which is option C. Question 18. Liquid Q has twice the density of liquid R. At depth x in liquid R, the pressure due to the liquid is per kilopascal. At what depth in liquid Q is the pressure due to the liquid 7 kilopascal? So when it comes to questions like comparing two things, here we are comparing liquid Q and liquid R. In this uh, situation, we can make a small quick column. So as you can see here, this Q stands for liquid Q. This R stands for liquid R. They have said liquid Q has twice the density of liquid R. So I have taken the density of liquid R as rho. Q's uh, density is twice of that R. So this is 2R. At depth X in R, so I have mentioned X is the depth, the liquid pressure is 4 kilopascal. So four kilopascal. Now at what depth in liquid Q is the pressure due to the liquid is seven kilopascal. So what's the liquid uh, pressure? I mean, what is the depth in liquid Q when the pressure is seven kilopascal? So I've denoted this uh, depth to be found. This, this is to be the one we have to find as X Q. Now, in order to find the value of this x q, the depth of liquid q, first we need to know the formula of pressure due to liquid. That is, pressure is equal to rho g h. Rho stands for density, g stands for the acceleration due to gravity, h stands for the height or the depth. Now, this pressure individually we will denote it for liquid q and also for liquid r. So here you can see pressure of liquid Q is density is 2 rho into G into the depth is X Q is equal to 7 kilopascal, 7 into 10 to the power 3. This, this is the prefix K. Similarly, pressure of R is density, which is rho into G into X, which is 4 into 10 to the power 3. Now, the easy way to solve this question is you can either go for substitution, but to easily solve this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this equation. That means let me call this as first number one equation, number two. So I'm dividing one by two. Why I'm doing this? Because I can easily cancel out the things that are common. So for example, you can see G 
G is common. Kilopascal, I mean, 10 to the power 3, the 10 to the power 3, the prefix is the same. Rho, that is density, and the density is the same. Now, I am remained with 2xq, that is 2 here, xq, divided by the depth of liquid R is equal to 7 by 4. Now, make xq as your subject. So it's going to be this x goes to the other side as numerator, 2 comes to the denominator, so 2 into 8, 7x by 8. So you're getting the answer directly. The answer for this question is option B. Question 19. A sample of metal is subjected to a force which is which increases to a maximum value and then decreases back to zero. A force extension graph for a sample is shown. When the sample contracts, it follows the same force extension curve as when it was being stretched. What is the behavior of metal between X and Y? The main thing to note here, when you have force ex extending, when you remove it, returns back to zero. That means there is no permanent uh, extension. So there are two types of uh, extension. So it deformation or extension. One is elastic deformation. The other one is plastic deformation. Elastic deformation is when you give force to a string or spring or any object and when it extends once you remove the force when it comes back to its original shape then it's called elastic deformation plastic deformation is when when you remove the load or the force it does not return back to its previous length or previous shape there is a permanently deformed length or shape then it is called plastic deformation so you can see once the external load is removed from an elastic deformed body it regains its original shape that's elastic deformation when the body is plastically deformed, it retains its deformed shape even after the removal of external load. As you can see this question, it comes back to zero. The ex there is no extension. That means it's coming back to its original shape or original length. This shows that it is a elastic deformation. It is not plastic. So they're asking, what is the behavior of the metal between X and Y? It follows the same path. It comes back to its previous shape. So it is elastic, but not plastic. Option A says both elastic and plastic, which is incorrect. Option B, not elastic and not plastic. It's incorrect. C, plastic, but not elastic. Okay, they have said the other way around. So that is incorrect. D, elastic but not plastic. Exactly, this is the answer. So the answer for this question 19 is option D. Question 20. The graph shows the length of the string as it is stretched by an increased load. What is the spring constant? Now you can see they are given the length this is not the extension. If this is the extension graph, then it will start from the origin. Since it's starting from 10 centimeter, the original length of the spring is 10 centimeter when the force is zero newton. Now, once you give a force of 0 0.5 newton, it increases to 15 newton. So that's why it's so it's here. That means for a force of 0 0.5 Newton, the extension is 15 minus 10, which is 5 centimeter. We need to find the spring constant. We know the formula of spring constant. Force is equal to spring constant into extension. So spring constant is equal to force into extension. Force I'm so sorry, this uh, this is not uh, this part is not 0 0.5, it is 0 0.4. So when a force of 0 0.4 Newton is given, the length extends by 5 centimeter. 
since it is centimeter converting to meter, so the 10 to the power minus two. When you simplify this, you'll get 8.0 Newton per meter. That is the answer of the spring constant, which is your option A. Question 21. A composition, composite rod is made by attaching a glass reinforced plastic rod and a nylon rod end to end as shown. So you can see this is plastic, this is nylon, they are attached, they are of both of one meter long. They are EP, EP stands for Young's modulus of the reinforced plastic is 40 gigapascal and the modulus, young modulus for uh, nylon is 2.0 gigapascal. The rod have the same cross-sectional cross area and each rod is one meter in length. So point to be noted, same cross-sectional area, same length. The young modulus is given for EP and EN, as you can see here. The composite rock with rod will break when its total extension reaches 3.0 millimeter. That means when the extension of the glass reinforced plastic plus the extension of the nylon, the total extension is three millimeter, then it will break. What is the greatest tensile stress that can be applied to the composite rod before it breaks? So before starting to find the stress of this rod, which is the plastic attached to nylon, we need to know the formula of Young's modulus. Young's modulus, in other words, it is the stress over strain. Stress transfer force over area. Strain stands for extension over length. So when you simplify, you get FL over AE. But our, our, our condition that is given is about extension. So make extension as the subject. So take this E towards this side. So we get E is equal to FL over E. F over A stands for stress. Stress into length into by Young's modulus. So you can simplify like this. So this is for E. So EP plus EN is equal to stress. Same length over EP plus stress same length into EN. So when you simplify, you can take stress and length. They are all common so that you can take this to one side. Bracket, one over EP plus one over EN. Now substitute these values and get the value of stress. So you can see here, stress, remains as it is. In place of length, I have 1.00 meters of substituted. One over EP, in place of the young modulus of nylon, I'm sorry, plastic, we have 40 giga. Giga is a prefix which stands for 10 to the power nine. In place of EN, it's 2.0 giga Pascal. So 2.0, 10 to the power nine. Now, this, is equated to the total extension that it can stand, which stand, that is 3.0 millimeter. If I want to convert it to meter, I take 10 to the power minus three. Now, when I simplify this and take stress as my subject, I get the answer 5.7, 10 to the power six Pascal, which is my option C. Question 22, what to two significant figures are the period, the frequency and the amplitudes of the wave represented by the graph? 
So you can see this is displacement. This is time. Time is given in milliseconds. Displacement is given in millimeter. We need to get the answer for two significant figures. Two significant figure. Now let's start with period. So period is the time taken by one complete wave. So if you see this wave, this wave ends here, but I do not know the accurate value because it doesn't exactly finish at the corner of this small box. If I consider the second one, the second one also doesn't complete at the same, it's completing at some middle of the box. If I go to the third, I can see it's completing somewhere exactly in the corner, which stands for 10.4. So three waves takes 10.4 milliseconds. So to take the time for one, I divide by three. I get 3.46 milliseconds. If I want to take it in two significant figure, it is 0 0.0035 seconds. So you know that the option directly goes to this one. The option is C, but if you want to check for frequency, frequency is a reciprocal of the time period. So here the time period is 0 0.0035. Your answer will be 286 hertz. But when you want to take it to two significant figure, it becomes 290 hertz. Amplitude is the maximum displacement in your y-axis. When you check, you will get it to six point something, around 6.6, 6.7 millimeter. You can see the answer for this question is option C. If you find this video useful, like this video, subscribe to Learners Club, press the bell button to get notified with new videos. See you in the next part. Bye-bye.